Rock stars, welcome to the hardest lesson of Free Motion Quilting Academy. <laughs> Now that may sound like quite the opener, but truth be told, this is where it starts and in many ways where it ends, because we're gonna talk about how to set up your machine, and we're gonna talk about tension, and getting these foundational things taken care of um, is really a lot harder than everything else we're gonna do. After we conquer this lesson, everything else you're gonna learn with me is a matter of practicing, and practice will make progress. This is the most technical lesson, so we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the way, and then you can finesse these skills as we continue on, all right? Now, the first thing before we tackle our free motion quilting is we wanna make sure that our machine is clean. So I'm gonna actually open up my needle plate here. We're gonna get the dust bunnies out together, and uh, spoiler, my machine actually really needs to be clean, so we're gonna get to see the real deal up under here and see what I've been hiding from all the piecing and quilting I've done lately. Now, on this particular machine, I'm very fortunate that there's an area underneath that this doesn't catch quite as much lint as some of the other machines that I have, but I've still got some good old dust bunnies that I can just lift right out of here. And I encourage you to really get down under and clean in your machine really, really well. Um, every couple of bobbins. It's just something that I would rather you do more often than not. I'm gonna grab a piece of pair of tweezers here because I got a weird piece of lint. And get, we wanna make sure that we're brushing the lint out. So use a brush, use a pipe cleaner, use a little vacuum, but never, ever, ever blow air down into your machine. It'll blow the dust up towards the electrical bits and uh, spoiler, dust plus electricity, like not such a good thing. That can really ruin your machine in a hurry. Get in your feed dogs really well, scrape out all the grimy bits so that we can start nice and fresh and clean. Let me get down under here in the bobbin race itself. And if you're on a domestic that has a drop-in bobbin and a drop-in bobbin race, make sure you actually get that race up out of there Underneath, Lint loves to hide under that like big plastic disc where it's tricky to get to. All right, so we've got this dusted out pretty darn well here. If your machine needs to be oiled, this is the moment where you should hit those hot spots with just a drop or two, doesn't take a whole lot. Um, and that's something that I recommend doing before every major project, um, more frequently if your machine manufacturer recommends, okay? All right, let's slide this plate back in here. Get our screws in. And like I said, really get up under here and do this properly every couple of bobbins. The time that it takes is worth it uh, compared to having something go wrong. Um, often when I have students reach out to me and tell me they're having tension problems, one of the very first questions I ask is, when have you cleaned out your bobbin race? Because as funky as it sounds, lint in the bobbin race will actually affect how your bobbin is moving and it'll ultimately affect how your stitches look. All right, so we've got our bobbin race all cleaned out. Next up, let's make sure we have a fresh needle. Also get asked, how often do I need to be changing my needles, Holly Ann? I recommend changing your needle um, every major project or so. Now, when we're doing practicing for free motion quilting, I would say maybe about every week, all right? I would rather you change it too often than not often enough because truth be told, needles are pretty inexpensive and they're a really important part of everything that we are doing. And when they begin to get dull, funky things can happen. Now, make sure your needle eye is lined up in the proper position and then tighten it down with your screwdriver. Then our foot. As I shared with you during the supply video, I use a ruler foot on my machine. It means it's a metal circle like this, but you can also have a hopping foot depending on your machine manufacturer and what is off offered, okay? This step set of steps that I am going through here this is considered what, what I would consider standard setup. Anytime I'm getting ready to spend time free motion quilting, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna check the threading on my machine, make sure my bobbin race is clean, make sure my foot is securely attached, put a fresh needle in if it has been a minute. If you don't remember when you've changed your needle, you need to change your needle, okay? 
get this threaded. Notice as well that throughout this entire process, my machine has been off. Okay, this is the safest way to get down in there because you do not, do not, do not, do not want to be down in your bobbin race and accidentally hit the foot pedal. You will do some serious damage to a finger or worse if those mechanics start moving. All right, we're cleaned up, we're ready to go. The next step of this is going to be checking our tension. Now you'll notice that I've had a practice sandwich handy right here this entire time. And that's because anytime I sit down to stitch, even if I was just stitching this morning and all of the other things that we have just done are already taken care of, I'm going to make sure that I check my tension. Now, the fundamentals of how tension works. The needle comes down with the top thread, you have your bobbin race. The bobbin race clicks twice and loops your bobbin thread around that top thread. They don't actually tie together or knot together, they just have a simple twist between them. Now, perfect tension, and I, I put this in air quotes because we're human, is it ever really perfect, right? It's a, a somewhat precise measurement, but ideal tension, perfect tension is gonna be where this twist lands right inside the batting of your quilt, and the resulting stitches look the same on the top and back of your quilt. Now, on a machine like this, a sit-down machine, what I'm talking about is our top tension. That's going to be your needle tension. That's what the dial or the panel on the front of your quilt controls. Turning your knob to the right, raising the number on your uh, digital control to a higher number is going to be tighter tension. So more tug on that top thread. Turning your knob to the left, having a lower number on your digital control is going to be looser tension, less pull on the top thread. This is a game of tug of war where we're only tugging or releasing on one side, all right? We don't wanna be fooling around with a bunch of different things because then we're never gonna reach that balance. Just one variable or top tension, all right. Now, in order to check this, we can fire up our machine now. If your machine has different modes like mine, I'm gonna make sure that I'm in free motion quilting mode. On this particular machine, that means that my machine automatically puts the feed dogs down. Depending on the machine that you're on, you may actually prefer to quilt with them up. I know, this is a revolutionary idea. Clutch your pearls or panic slightly if you need to. But I'm, even though this is contrary to what we're often told, on some off-the-shelf machines, having those feed dogs up is actually gonna keep the tension engaged better. So that's why I want you to be open to the possibility of trying both ways. For me, on this particular machine, I do have them down though. All right, I have my foot on. I'm gonna hold on to this top thread. I'm gonna drop my needle down and you'll see that it has pulled this bottom, ten or bottom thread up. And I like to pull it through before I begin stitching simply so that it is out of the way. I can see what's going on. It's got, not gonna get all knotted on the back. Now, if we were getting ready to work on a full-size quilt, I would put these gloves on, and trust me, I will as we head into our motifs, but since we're potentially gonna be snagging at a lot of little threads here, I wanna keep my hands nice and free and dexterous. Now, I've been doing some free motion quilting on my machine here pretty recently, so I am hopeful that my tension will be pretty good, but there's only one way to find out. At this stage of your free motion quilting journey where you may be looking at these swirls and this paisley and going, oh my gosh, Holly Ann, do I have to know how to do that in order to check my tension? No, you don't. Simply come in here, do your best at a little meander. It's okay if it looks a little scribbly. This is where I said we're gonna tackle this harder lesson, but we're gonna finesse it as we continue on. Because what shows up as a potential tension issue on something like a meander uh, may not show up as a tension issue by the time, or may show up as a tension issue by the time we get to swirls. And that's just because different motifs carry our tension differently. Now, here on top of the quilt, these stitches look gorgeous. You can see a clear beginning and end of each stitch. There's a normal amount of stitch length variation if you have a lot of variation in your stitch length, that's really normal when you're getting started. That hand-eye coordination that results in smoother stitch lengths will come with practice. Don't worry. Now, the moment of truth, when we flip this over, what's happening on the back? Now, as I mentioned, I've been doing some free motion quilting on my machine, so I'm actually pretty pleased with how this looks. Again, I have a clear beginning and end to each stitch. 
But what if I didn't? What would be some of the things I might see? If my top tension is too loose, I will have eyelashes on the back of the quilt, so it'll be kind of raggedy and scraggly looking. Or I might have what's called floaters, where it just looks like the thread is simply laying on top of the back of the quilt. You might even be able to feel the bump of the top thread poking through from the bottom, all right? In that case, you're gonna turn that knob to the right or raise the um, number on your digital control to a higher number. We wanna tug a little bit more on that top loop and pull that bottom thread up into the batting where it belongs. Now, if your top tension is too tight, what happens? It is possible to get eyelashes on the top of your quilt. In fact, as we get into swirls and paisleys in the lessons ahead, I will mention to you that if you get a little knobby knob at any of these points, that it's an indication to just tweak your tension slightly, loosen it up just a little bit. More likely than not though, if your top tension is too tight, your thread will break. So if you're having thread breaks, go ahead and make sure your tension or your uh, thread is threaded correctly through your machine. Make sure that bobbin race is clean, that you have a fresh needle. And if you're still having issues, go ahead and loosen up that top tension just a little bit and see if it relieves the issues, all right? So remember, when we sit down to free motion quilt, our setup procedure is gonna be to make sure that our machine is clean, our foot is on securely, that we have a fresh needle, and that we've checked our tension. Then we're ready to get started doing our actual quilt practice or working on our latest quilt. 